Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And in yesterday's video I talked about uh, the deep space science and all of the things that were going into it in various different ways. And today I'm going to do a similar thing about the matter science and, um, and there's a few other things to talk about as well. But that's the, uh, that's the headline so let's take a look at it. Last time we saw that Tristan had got the uh, the matter science production up and running with all these weird wibbly machines that make strange noises and then eventually allow you to make matter catalog twos. Those are, seem to be coming through fairly slowly at the moment, but never mind. I'm sure I'll upgrade that uh, later in the, in the future when he aware uh, when when it's uh, a suitable time to do it. And this requires the generation of matter, um, which can be done by uh, by taking in matter science matter catalog ones and uh, the, and these uh, material testing packs and purple clouds and turning that into into into, into this matter goop that then can be pumped around uh, pumped out and then taken around to wherever it's needed and so that was brought up over to here in the uh, in the matter science area so uh, once again we've got the more or less standard uh, science science system where we are bringing in um, significant data of the catalogs that would come up here because they'd be split off to go onto this belt instead um, and then uh, coolants and uh, and the the and the miscellaneous other ingredient which it starts off by being scrap but then it also requires matter to be brought in so that same that same liquid we were just talking about and so that can be turned into matter science pack 2 that's great. That works. It's it has been it in fact has been working. It's been uh, we've, we've we've had a decent number of those produced, and they've been trundling down here and going into the uh, going into the labs down at the bottom in order to carry on doing doing researches. And uh, the, the, yeah, they've all gone in. They've all disappeared. But as I was telling you last week, that method of making matter is kind of. It's really, really expensive. Take take a look in F, F and EI at this one. All of, especially taking in the matter catalogs, which take loads of thing, loads of expensive stuff themselves to produce. It's it's a horrific recipe. Fortunately, there are other recipes as well that can be used to make it. So you can turn raw rare metals into into um, uh, in, into matter. You can turn iron into matter. You can turn sand and stone into matter. Great, uh, but all these things are, are hidden behind other researches. So we weren't able to do this straight away. But once we had matter science pack twos available, we could then start using them to do ba basic matter processing, which only takes 120 of them, which is well, it's quite a lot. But it's but given that we get you get several out of each build from each catalog, and we had that we have probably double double if productivity on the, on the science labs as well. It's not so bad and that gets you the ability to turn stone and sand into matter and once you've done those you can then also do an additional matter processing uh, research down here and that gets you the ability to uh, research some of the more advanced ones so we can turn uh, rare, raw rare metals into matter we can turn uh, iron into matter and those are the two that we've done so far and conveniently, down on Norvis, we are producing enormous quantities of miscellaneous um, materials, and some of them we don't really want. So if we look down here, you can see, okay, at the moment the iron is flowing merrily through, the copper is flowing merrily through, but the raw rare metals have stopped because we've got enough of them. And so those are all being dumped out on these, on these sort of whirly belts down here, and disappearing down these chutes, which takes them down here, and they're being where they're being pumped into these matter plants, and these are turning all of those rare metals that are pouring down here into into matter. So we, we've got yeah, a nice a nice stream of them going in here. We've got is this filling up or emptying? This is gra actually gradually filling up. So we are we're actually <laughs> even though we're turning it into matter, we are still producing raw rare metals faster than we can destroy them. Uh, maybe maybe a second machine will be put in here sooner or later. But anyway, that is then producing the matter much much more cheaply, and more importantly, not only is it producing it more cheaply, it's producing it out of stuff we actually don't want so just dumping it in here where it can then be passed through and then, then put into a train in exactly the manner you'd expect once it fills up it can go over to a presumably there is a train a train swap stop over here somewhere uh, yes here we go like this so the train will come over here it'll load up this train which will let and then this train can skedaddle off over to go and um uh, to take to take this all this matter up into space where it can then be used for science production and this is a so, so much cheaper way of producing the matter it's, it's absolutely amazing it's kind of cruel of the game to get to get you started and make you think that matter is going to be that expensive in the, in the uh, right at the start and then give and then give you a much cheaper um, way of making it later on but you know who cares it you, you learn pretty quickly as long as you look at the recipes so yeah there's a, tra a couple of uh, train down here to, to fill up take it over and then get it get it taken up in, into orbit in, in the way that all of these trains work now, of course, Tristan being Tristan, the, the system is not quite as simple as I've implied. So yes, over here, all of this is pouring through. But over on the, the iron one, he's got a system that is taking some of the iron through. So he's hooked up three uh, some pieces of belt along here, and he's monitoring to see when there is... 
when there is n basically when there is no iron on the belt over here, then he lets some out from up here. So that should, so, which is why we're getting these little bursts coming out every so often, just to get basically this is a way to just split some of it off. And I think this is a sort of this was an early print early design when he wanted to get a decent amount of it out, but without seriously wrecking our iron production. So he's li pulling li a little bit of it out. Why he's not just using a, a splitter, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, he wants to pull a little bit of it out. But if we ever get too much, then this belt will also kick in. So this is the one that's watching for this basically being full. And when that one's full, then it just pours it out of here. It'll also flow around here and disappear off into the... Um, uh, and be passed through much, much more quickly. And also, then, at that point, it'll also go into here, in, into this in, into this uh, recycling facility as well, to be turned into landfill. So presumably, we are now, at some point, we're going to get... Well, we're going to get, at some point, we're going to get so much raw, rare metal through here that we're going to start actually turning it into landfill again. Uh, but that time is not just yet. I think Tristan's plan is to come through here and remove all of these overly clever things and just basically say if uh, we want to take out any 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 excess of any of these we want to take out and turn into matter down here so we'll probably want another one of these machines over doing de dealing with the rare metals um and then when and then when that if that ever backs up then sure we'll turn it into landfill but we don't expect that to happen quite so much fortunately we have quite a lot of landfill already stockpiled so I don't think we're going to run out of that uh, and now that we're turning it into matter at least it doesn't feel like it's being wasted Later on, there will be recipes to turn matter back into um, in, into the various ores, but I'm not convinced those are going to be worth it. But we shall see. I may change my mind. You never know. This matter supply is then brought up here into to Norbit, where it will be dropped off and put into this tank over here. Uh, and from there, it can then be pumped through by this pump, uh, which will then take it through in, into, into, into this tank, which will then pass it through into this tank over here. And the idea of this is that we're um, going to make sure that we use up this matter before we use up other matters, like uh, like the, uh, before we start generating any from over here. And for the time being, Tristan has literally turned off all of these by turning the pumps around, so these literally can't produce any matter now, um, because we don't want to use the expensive recipe unless we decide we absolutely have to. And at the moment, um, well, we could do with a little bit more up here, so it'd be nice if the train came up again. Uh, but we are, I, I guess, we've, we've managed to burn through whatever matter we did have, um, turning it into turning it into the science packs up here. But Again, there's plenty of those, so I think it's just one of those things where we need to let the system run for a little while to fill up the buffers, and then it'll probably be okay. Um, if not, we may end up needing to pull something out of the ground. Maybe at that point we'll start using some of the excess that's brought over from uh, places like Andragon, which with all of its stone, and uh, Oliran with all of the iron, because those are we 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 have the capability of bringing over ridiculous amounts of stuff from those two planets. I'm actually quite surprised that the Oliran spaceship is not parked here trying to unload because that's usually where it is because we, we can bring it over so quickly. Um, I'm slightly surprised. But we can we could pull the stone from here or the miscellaneous anything from Andragon, I guess, and all of the iron from Oliran because those are available in huge quantities and I don't think we're ever going to run out. And we can make enormous quantities of matter from those as well. So I think that is going to be probably... We will use those up in preference to making matter from the uh, from the catalogues because that is a horribly horribly expensive way of doing it. Speaking of Andragon, uh, Mike is continuing with his let's attempt to mine up everything on Andragon policy. Uh, someone suggested he should also try and fill in all of the uh, all of the lakes with uh, landfill as well and just completely completely landfill the planet as another thing he could, that he could do on it. But he's put in a load of um, new new mining areas, so um, you know what he's, he's written them all down. But I'm going to just sort of scan through since he's been helpful enough to put all of these uh, all these notes on the uh, on, on the um, on the planet for me. I might as well just pan around and, and, and do deal with them in turn and then go back to the notes and see if I've missed anything. So over here he has the entertaining, a, a rather entertaining mine which is raw rare metal, which is rare metal, stone and cryonite mine and all of that is coming out here and then being put onto the same belt which is a horrible horrible idea but to be honest given the way this planet is working it doesn't matter. The idea is just to dig up as much stuff from the planet as possible and ship it all out. So what order it comes out in, how the belts are merged together, it actually doesn't matter. So um, whilst this is is definitely horrible, it's still, it's kind of okay. He's also pulling out a bit of the stone here, however, in order to crush it down into sand and then make, and then turn it into, um... Ah, yes, the sand, yes, the sand goes in with water and gets turned into, um, hydrogen and chlorine. And then the chlorine can be pumped through here to, to be used in the, uh, in the rare metal, raw rare metal mining. Because this, this came as a bit of a surprise to us. Um, we didn't, I did, well, I certainly didn't realise, and Mike clearly didn't realise, because he had a bit of a shock, that mining rare metals requires, uh, requires a supply of chlorine as a, as a mining fluid. Uh, which is very, very, which is a little bit 
strange, but uh, okay, apparently it does. But we hadn't noticed this because this is the absolute. This is the first um, rare metals mine we have set up in the entire game, because until now the core mining has provided more than enough rare metals for everything we've been needing to do. So we we just straight up haven't needed it. But now, now Mike has actually started trying to dig up some rare metals and actually use them. He's he discovered, yeah, much, I say much to his surprise, that it requires chlorine. So um, yeah, there's a little 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 machine there to make 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 the chlorine for that system. And conveniently, there was a stone patch right next to it. Now, to be fair, this is Andragon. There are stone patches next to virtually everything, so I'm not particularly surprised. Uh, he's put in. Is this a is this mineral water? Yes, he's also got mineral water being mined over here. This is something else we've not done a great deal of, but that is simply being taken away by uh, in in a in a pipe to go all the way, presumably all the way up into the into the core processing area, and then just being barreled up as like everything else. Yeah, is over there. Makes way. Yes, it makes its way over in, into the yes in, into here. Oh, we do have a limiter a limiter on here to make sure it doesn't get pumped to make sure that there is always room for the uh, for the rep, for the uh, mineral water to come out of the uh, the core chunk processing before we pump more in from um, from the mine which makes a lot of sense. We need to make sure we use that up first. Uh, there's also quite a lot of mineral water barrels along here because they're oh, then they're being fed into here. So I guess we just need to get the, the uh, spaceships flying more often. So we need to be burning burning more of the stone to turn it into uh, into matter, I guess. And then we'll, we'll have more demand and we'll be able to empty this planet a bit more quickly. <laughs> Okay, what is next? So there's that one and that one. So this is also new, apparently. Oh, there's another imasite uh, quarry over here. So yeah, digging up imasite, lovely. That can be fed along here and go onto this belt. And we can oh, possibly get a little bit of stone out of there as well, although those mines are now dead. He does say he's gone around doing a little bit of trimming around the edges of the mines and removing some of the dead mining drills, but these have obviously died since he did that. And since I've been recording for a good hour or so, um, that, that could have happened after the end of the stream. So it's a, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not, not going not gonna to criticise for that. Okay, so that's those ones across there. There's another another new patch up here. What what are you? You are oh, this is a uranium pa uh, pla a patch up here. So he's had to pipe in the um, sulfuric acid. So he started making the sulfuric acid. There is a uh, a tank of it here. We've got chemical plants here making the sulfuric acid from iron and presumably there's some sulfur coming. Oh yeah, sulfur coming in from here because there's there's oil processing going on down here, and that's going to be running off the core processing, and maybe he set up another oil mine. I don't... Yes, there we go. There's an oil mine up here as well, so he's going to be digging up the oil here, so that's going to be... That's going to be both being turned into sulfur to make the sulfuric acid, and presume potentially being put into barrels as well. Yeah, there's another... There's another input there that I imagine is probably from his oil mine, so, yep, yeah, lots of that. So we've got the input from the oil mine, and then an input from the core processing, again, with the priority system. I talked the same priority system as there, and then a pump taking it away to be turned into sulfur as, as, as required. Ah, and he's rotating and he's rotated the, um, the barrel down here to make sure that it doesn't it doesn't barrel up any oil at least for a uh, for a while until he's make sure until he's made sure he's got, had enough uh, sulfuric acid made in order to get all of the uh, the acid so that's fine yeah so rotated it around like that uh, and oops I just made a few but never mind uh, so yep that's the uh, that's the the oil being dug up from here and that seems to be all of the th that's all of the this is news that he's tagged so uh, let's see what else he's said. Yep, that is everything over on this planet. One thing that does amuse me is that we are going to end up with a load of sulfuric acid in here. Now, when he's when he's finished, if if he ever does finish the entire mining up the entire planet, it would be quite straightforward to just demolish all of these things and spill the sulfuric acid on the floor and go nobody saw that. But knowing Mike's sense of completeness, and especially as I'm about to say this, he's probably then going to decide that actually all of this acid should be put into barrels as well and taken away on the system over here. So if he does decide he wants to do that, I hope he leaves enough iron behind. Actually, that said, there will be enough iron coming out of the uh, the core mining, which is going to carry on on this planet, because even once we've dealt with all of the mines on this planet, it's still going to be a stone planet that is going to be producing lots and lots of stone out of its core mines, so we aren't going to run out. So, um, yeah, so he's always going to have some iron available to take the acid away. So maybe that'll be a way to finish the planet off. At the other end of that system, well, I showed you this before, the uh, the trains come down, they unload all the various different things that uh, Mike's bringing over in various different levels of mess. So over here, he's going to be unloading all of his, all, all of the things he brings down from, essentially all the, all the weird things that come over from Andrigan that can't be dealt with particularly easily by anything on this planet. And so over here, you can see that we've we've got a we've got a belt here that is trying to take away the vitamin lines. There's another one that's taking it downwards over here. Um, oh, and it's putting it into a train for some reason. That seems odd. Uh, where does that go to? Stuff for Mike to take. Okay. R oh, I see. That's going the other way. My, uh, my apologies. I, I I read that the wrong way around. So this is going up here to feed it back into the um, into the warehouse up here because Mike accidentally let a load of it leak out into the into the rest of the system. So Tristan's made a mildly passively aggressively named uh, state, uh, train system for him to for him to get it back. Uh, so yes, the that, that vitamin line then gets brought out over here. So this is now his uh, third thing that he's dealing with. It we're using the system, uh, which is going to come over to up. Uh, 
here, uh, where he has made a start, and he, he he has not finished this yet, but he's made a start on the processing system to generate the to deal with the uh, the vitamelange that's coming through. So at first he's going to be pulverizing it down into the uh, into the vitamelange nuggets. Then he's going to be growing it into the blooms, which requires sand, which is presumably going to be coming from well, there's a, a sand a sanding machine here, which is going to take the stone and presumably then. Uh, sand it. It comes down here, and then does it? Then will it eventually then come back up here again? I, oh yes, there we go. There's a loop down here, so the stone will come down here, and then the sand comes back up again, fed into here where it can make the blooms. The blooms can then be passed over into here where they can be made into the um, in, into the extract and the um, in the and the spice, which can then be output over here. We're we're passing the. Um, Okay, we're passing the, the spice down to this station over here. I don't know where that's going to go to, but I guess it's probably going to have to go up into orbit, because I don't think we're using any vitamelange down on the ground. So I guess it can get taken back up there, fed back into the vitamelange system, and as long as... Well, as long as we use up both of these sufficiently quickly, then I it probably won't matter. I am not I'm not sure how much spice we get through. I think we get through quite a lot of extract, but I'm not sure how much spice. So we shall we shall see. Um, if it causes problems, then uh, Mike's just going to have to put in an extra system down here that takes the, that that purifies the spice into more extract, and then we only ship the extract up. But we shall see. This this might be absolutely fine. Who knows? On a rather different level, uh, Mark has been going, get, preparing to go on the offensive. He's he's built up this um, this assault, this military assault ship. Uh, where well, well, have, we, have we got a name for it yet? Let's have a look. Uh, no, it's just called the Gold Crest. Okay, so uh, stick in the uh, stick your suggestions for uh, names for this ship into the comments. But the idea of this is it's a ship that can fly out nice and quickly because it's got antimatter drives, uh, and it's going to be able to fly out quickly, drop down and land on a hostile planet, and then be able to defend itself from the uh, from from whatever uh, interest and abuse it receives from there. So as you can see, it's got a ring of laser turrets all the way around the outside to keep it to keep it safe from anything that gets close. Then it's got the laser artillery to keep it safe from anything that's a bit further away, and then. It's got artillery turrets with nuclear shells in them to um, to push push away anything that's um, that's a bit closer than we want it to be, but and uh, just generally to to make the whole to make a much larger area safe around it. And the I suppose the idea is that um, well, yeah, the laser turrets will deal with anything that's close up. The the art laser artilleries will <coughs> will deal with any biter bases that are sort of close-ish, and then the uh, the long-range artillery will make will push it back a bit further, and then as the biters start to run in from there, the laser artillery and the laser turrets can deal with everything that comes running in. And just to make absolutely sure, there is also then a ring of shields going all the way around the outside of the ship to make sure it's absolutely safe. I have a minor concern about these ones at the bottom here, that they're not quite sticking out far enough and the biter might nibble on the engines or squeeze in through this gap here, but I suspect in the time it's taken them to work out what they're doing and how to get in through through there and possibly even through this gap up here. I don't know whether that's a gap, a bite safe gap or not. Uh, the rest of the weaponry, the la all the lasers around here will have successfully minced them and they won't be too much of a problem. During the construction process, Mark did run into some um, minor issues. So uh, he originally he built it a little bit smaller than this, I think, with only one of these tanks in there. And the idea was that it was supposed to be full of steam. And this, so the ship, this is a steam powered spaceship. And so we send it out into space with a tank full of steam. The steam gradually gets to, goes through the um, the the uh, turbine generator over here and gets turned into low temperature steam and water. And the steam goes come back through here, and the water then all gets get gathered up in this in this where in this uh, tank over here. So it remains to be seen how long a tank full of steam will power this ship for. Hopefully, it'll be a decent amount of time. But I guess we'll uh, we shall find out once it starts flying around. And then I guess when it comes back again, we're going to need to have some sort of heating upping system. I see there is a oh I see there is a beam receiver over here, just taking in water turn, and turning it into bajillion degree steam, uh, 5,000 degree steam, which can then go down the pipe here and then be pumped into the ship to refill it. So I guess when we have all the water in this one, we'll then pump that back out and put it into the tank over here so it can be reboiled re and turned back into steam again. So uh, yes, steam powered spaceship, whatever next. <laughs> uh, steam, uh, to be fair, it is steam and antimatter powered, so you know, a little, a little bit of each, but the electricity is all going to come from the steam. Making this spaceship did require some new tech to be built, though, because we didn't have previously we didn't have antimatter engines, antimatter uh, uh, booster tanks, or shield generators. So I imagine those have all been shoved on the top of the uh, column of construction over here. So let's have a look. Uh, yes, here we go. 
Um, he's used some blue chests for this, which is a little bit naughty, but I guess we'll... Um, I don't know. I, I guess, given it's for Naquium Cubes, I'm probably not going to complain too much, because filling an entire belt up with those will be kind of horrific. Uh, so, along here, yes, we are bringing... Uh, no, no, and, and we are oh, and with, the, with the Ion Engines to make the Antimatter Engines as well, so... Yeah, maybe if we planned ahead properly, we could have we could have put in a, put the machines the 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 um the boxes in the right place for the telescopic recipes. Uh, but we didn't, so um, never mind. And anyway, that is going to be yeah. So up here we are making the um the antimatter engines, we are making the antimatter booster tanks, and we're making the uh, we're making some kind of um what are you? You're a radar construction pylon. Okay, I'd not been bothering with those, so I didn't think they looked all that useful. But if yeah, if somebody else wants to use them, then uh, yeah, go for it. And then also the shield generators up here, which again is. <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of blue chests up here, which I ha I've been trying to avoid, but I do sort of accept that for some of these things, maybe they're kind of required is too strong a word, but they do make things a lot simpler. I'm su surprised we don't have the dynamic emitters anywhere on this uh, on this tower though. Those feel like something we could be bringing in by uh, by belt rather than bot. Um, but again, this is just for building infrastructure and occasional spaceships, so it shouldn't be too high throughput. So. Whilst I don't really like it, I don't hate it as much as I might otherwise, I guess. <laughs> hmm. I am looking forward to having a play with that warship, though. It uh, seems to be, uh, it looks like it looks like it's going to be suitably dangerous as long as it doesn't run out of steam. So I think, yes, I think that's going to be fun. Maybe we should stick a couple of solar panels in it in case it does run out of steam. I'm not sure. And so, while we're talking about um, building a warship and going off to other planets and uh, making friends with the natives and that sort of thing, somebody in, in, in chat asked me what a, a high threat level planet looked like. So it turns out threat is out of 100. So 100 is the maximum that you can get to. So I found I found one in, in the list that was 100% threat, came out to have a look at it, and yeah, there's there's, there's quite a few biters on it. Um, these haven't grown out as much as I was expecting to since I since I came out and, and, and initially uh, 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 first spotted them. Uh, maybe because there isn't any pollution out here. Maybe it's because, or maybe it's because it's a special planet. Because when I came out and looked at this planet, I discovered this thing, and we got a message from it, which I shall show you from the uh, from the stream here. But he seems to be a sort of a, a friendly chappy who would like us to come out and visit. Apparently, there's some kind of puzzle available out here. So, uh, and what we've got here is we've got these things, which are called interburbulator projectors. And over here we've got an interburbulator control, which makes me think that this thing in the middle may be an interburbulator or perhaps an interburbulator screen. So I guess we get at some point we're going to have to come over here, land on this planet, and go over and give it a poke and find out what on earth it does. Uh, this is appears to be another space exploration secret. So um, I yeah I'm I'm intrigued to find out what it's going to be and uh, and look forward to coming over and exploring it. However, it's not that easy to get to because it is out in the Cephi system, uh, which is way out over here. So we're going to need to fly from um, Kalidus all the way over to Cephi. Now we can take we can take the Finestra shortcut, so it's not actually going to be take us all that long to get there. Probably only going to take about ten minutes of uh, game time. But even so, it is still it's a long way away, and it's an inter and it seems um, and if I'd known I was going to find that when I looked at it, I might have tried a, a nearer planet first. But it's going to be interesting. We'll, we'll we'll have a look at that at some point. But I think we're going to concentrate on the deep space sciences first, and then come back to that one at some some point later in the future. In other news, Marcus started making the black jetpacks, so that must be a tier 4 jetpack. Those require Naquium cubes, and so Tristan finagled in a way to get them down from orbit. I'm not 100% what sure what the method of do for doing that is. I think it involves requesting stuff to this chest here, and then it gets put into the recycling station and then taken down that way. And if it's an unrecognised thing, then it will get exported and put out into a purple chest, which will mean it will get put into the uh, logistics system, which will mean it's then sort of theoretically available down on Norvis and can be grabbed by a bot. And so, yep, that is a an, an even better jetpack. That will give you a uh, four thrust per jetpack. And so it means we can, if we if we come over and grab a load of those, then we can move around that little bit faster, which is you know always nice. And I noticed yeah, all the earlier ones are being put into blue chests now. So if you want to request jetpacks from the the uh, logistics system, you can only get the best ones, which which makes sense. Mark has also stopped our production of atmospheric filters. As you can see, there's a couple of belts have been turned around down here, so the uh, the input ingredients are no longer flowing up into the in, in, into the uh, into the machines up here. Um, and this and so yeah, we do have we do have quite a large backlog of them though. As you can see, there's um, still two thousand in this warehouse, and then there's all these ones going up the belt along here, along <laughs> here. Uh, there's a little bit of a loop there for reasons goodness knows what's going on there um and they're getting passed up here into uh all the way up here and from some point up here they're yeah okay they're getting into a warehouse and then they are being fed out from here and this belt goes all the way round round the world basically so it goes sort of from here all the way up here somewhere in fact if we turn on the pollution map 
you'll probably you can you can basically see where it goes because the edges of the pollution cloud are where the bed where, where the uh, the filter belt runs in order to keep the, the area clean. Uh, so, but we've decided that we don't actually need to keep running the filter belt, and certainly we don't need to keep expanding it. Partly because there are so many of them in the system at this point that by the time they run out we will probably have finished the game. But also more importantly because now all the way around the outside of the base we have, um, laser we have lasers, we have artillery, we have probably artillery lasers, yes there we go. Uh, so in theory we, we reckon that we are now sufficiently well defended all the way around the edge of the base that we don't actually need to have the, um, to ha have the cleanup happening. And also Tristan and Mark have been continuing to extend their uh, making Norvis safe thing. Uh, Mark has got a bit further around this way. He says he's, he's gained another peninsula, I think. Yeah, he says he's liberated another peninsula to the west, which I, 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 I'm not quite sure where, where, where that means. I'm guessing it might be, it might be this bit over here, probably, but perhaps. Uh, so he's gone even further out that way. Tristan's pushed out these, all of these, and he said another six chunks or so, so presumably um, uh, yeah, a little bit further. Oh, it's funny to spot there's occasional odd missing um, pylons in there. I don't know why there's, why there's the gaps. But anyway, he's, he's pushing out further this way. He's got to the edge of the planet over here, so he just needs to sort of carry on pushing all of these out, and eventually we'll have a huge area protected. And so we are going for... Um, we are going for liberating Norvis the old-fashioned way, using we using uh, lasers and nukes rather than by using a plague rocket, just because it seems more uh, a bit more sporting and a bit more entertaining. So yeah, there's the the big extension pushing out the uh, pushing out all the, all the damage in all, all directions. Eventually, maybe we will wipe out all the all the biters on Norvis. Who knows? Uh, but in the meantime, we're we're pretty sure that we can let the pollution run free, and we've got enough laser turrets all the way around the outside to uh, to keep everything safe. And this is why, if we take a look at the uh, electric network, you can see that we have 407 of these laser artillery turrets using about 20 gigawatts of power. Oh, and another four and a half thousand normal laser turrets, but those are only using half a gigawatt, so it's not quite so horrific. <laughs> Over on Kothar, Mike noted that the iridium production has stopped, and if we follow that back all the way around here, we can see it's because we don't have any enriched vulcanite coming through. However, if we look over in Norbit, we can find out that the reason we don't have any, any enriched vulcanite coming through is because the ship is already full of it and still has a load of iridium left in it. So basically, we've caught up on iridium. We now have enough iridium in the in the system um, that the ship doesn't need to fly back over there, and therefore the systems out on Kothar have fallen asleep. This is ex entirely acceptable. This is the this is what we expect to happen when we when we get to the point of actually having enough of it. And so you can see that the reason yeah the reason it stopped is because well the ship doesn't need to go anywhere because it hasn't finished unloading yet. A similar I was going to say the same thing has happened to the Njord ship as well, but actually the Njord ship doesn't ha it hasn't got enough plastic on it, so we're not bringing plastic up from uh, Norvis fast enough to keep the uh, to, to to fill this ship up and get it to set, set off over to back over to Njord and get that get the systems over there start running again that's a little bit concerning but I guess we'll um, we'll leave that to sort sort that one out next time at the moment though we don't have a shortage of um, of holmium we've got 25,000 in there and another 23,000 in there so yeah we have sufficient but it would be probably be a good idea for the ship to set off again fairly soon just to make sure that we always make always keep having sufficient should we say and these impressions are in fact borne out by the graph where as you can see there's lots and lots of healthy green lines along here I notice we seem to be a bit short of Pyroflux, so let's go and, we'll take, go and take a look at that in a moment. We don't have the superior tech cards, but that's okay because we haven't started making those yet. All of these are very, very full. Matter two and um, As uh, and Deep Space one and two are not are not working particularly well. But those are the ones we've we've only just finished, and we know there are some problems with those, so that's not too surprising. Interestingly, we appear to have lots of Naquium now, so a Naquium spaceship must have arrived. Uh, we are a bit short of Vitalic Reagent, and this this is this one gets taken away in enormous quantities to be taken over to um, Talos to be turned into Naquium. And so you can see it, you can actually see it filling up again before your very eyes, because presumably the Big Red ship has has brought some over for us and is now filling it back up again after the other ship took took it away. So this is in fact the system working as intended and as designed. Tristan says he's done an upgrade to tier 3 productivity modules of the silicon production, mostly because it just seemed wasteful not to. I mean we don't we aren't getting through huge amounts of it, but we are we do have other uses for stone at this point. We we are we're quite happy to turn stone into matter juice. So, you know, that's a reason to save a little bit of it, I suppose. We can then use it for something else. And he's put in what he describes as a slight discouragement for trains driving south past the core area, which is this station here. So, this is even called route discouragement uh, and that is to encourage trains to go potentially 
a, take a different route. So maybe go down over here and come across this way instead of coming across here and then going down this side. Um, it doesn't need to be a particularly strong discouragement, uh, but we do. But, but if a train is coming from here, for example, and it wants to go to down here, then we'd rather it came around this way because it, the, the lines are a bit quieter. Or actually, we, even more so, we'd rather. It, oh, I don't know where we'd rather it came. Yeah, this whole area around here is a bit of a is a bit of a, a, a bottleneck. But we've, we've put, oh, I guess we've put it. We've put in a, a, a cut through area here. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. We, we, we've got the normal thing that happens. As, as a Factorio factory expands, the area you started in tends to be a bit of a bottleneck in the train system. Uh, it's, it's okay at the moment. I mean, you can, you can see there's quite a lot of trains going through this area, but they're going through without any significant difficulties. So it seems to be all right, uh, but I could see this area potentially turning into a bottleneck if we were, if we were uh, unlucky. We also had some issues with scrap backing up. At the moment it seems to be absolutely fine, but there is quite a lot of it coming. I think this is all coming from the deep space science. Uh, there's quite a lot coming from this direction from the when the matter science is running. There's quite a lot coming up here, uh, both contaminated and non-contaminated. And, and then when the, and especially when the matter science starts running and starts using uh, material science cards, then we get huge amounts of scrap coming along here from the material science areas. So there's a lot of scrap coming in for a lot of reasons. And we're thinking it might be quite interesting to upgrade a lot of these belts to the deep space belts. They do require Naquium to make them, but they're twice as fast as the belts we've got at the moment. So if we put those in for a, certainly for the main bus of them along the middle here, and then going down into the uh, into the processing area, that could give us a lot of extra um, throughput with very little extra design work required. So. We may end up doing that in the future, which will be interesting because in previous games I've hardly used the deep space belts just because they seem so expensive for what they are. I'd usually rather just run two belts. Uh, we've, I've used them occasionally. There, were, there used to be a few deep space underground belts around here because they can go so much further underground and space underground belts are pathetic. Um, but we seem to have moved away from all of those. They've all they've all been all been removed in, in one of the bus redesigns up here. Um, but yeah, having yeah, there we go. This is a l huge amount of scrap suddenly, all of a sudden, and that's probably because uh, we, we've taken a train load of um, material science cards away, and now it's suddenly trying to replenish them all. So it's kicking out massive quantities of scrap. So yeah, all that needs to be dealt with, and so we, we, there's been some streamlining done down here, and it, it gets through it a little bit more quickly now, and hopefully it's going to be, hopefully it'll be enough. I guess we'll we'll find out over the uh, over the coming weeks. <laughs> um, it is already seeming to jam up a little bit along here. It's not flowing in quite as smoothly as we would like, but yeah, <laughs> there's 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 a lot of scrap that we need to deal with. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, that's all I can really say. <laughs> And so, since nobody managed to die in the last stream, uh, we'll move on to the some of the other researches we've been doing. And we've got the uh, biological upgrade Constitution Five, which gives you that little bit more health you, you might you, that you might want. Um, I'm not quite sure why we did that one, given that health isn't that useful and we didn't have that many uh, Deep Space Science Pack 1s to burn through. Maybe we, at the time we thought we did have plenty of Deep Space Science 1s because they because we hadn't eaten up all the uh, Naquium trying to make Deep Space Science 2s. I'm not sure, but that we, we've, we've done this one anyway, so that's potentially useful. We've developed the antimatter engine at um, Mark's request. So this one is it's, it's, it's another engine for spaceships. So there are three tiers of engines. First off, you get the rocket engines, which they don't use a huge amount of power. As you can see, they're 103 kilowatts. It's almost nothing, but they use lots of fuel and they don't provide all that much thrust. Then eventually you manage to upgrade those to ion engines, which uh, use a lot more power. You can see there's 10 megawatts each, which is, you know, quite a lot. And they use ion stream instead of rocket fuel. And ion stream is much cheaper to make in terms of resources, but uses a lot more power. And as I said, the ion engine uses a lot more power to just produce the thrust, you know, like an actual ion engine. So they're, a, they're, they're the tier two ones. And that's what we're using on most of our spaceships because they're really good. The fuel is cheap for them. And, they're, and for a ship that just stays up in space, they're, 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 just, they're good. Then you get onto the antimatter engine, where you can see there the, the power consumption is significantly lower. It's only one megawatt instead of ten, so it's sort of some. It's halfway in, halfway in between the monologue scale at least, um, and it produces quite a lot more thrust for that as well. So it's a much much better engine. It'll make your spaceships go much faster, but it requires antimatter for fuel. And making antimatter is is quite a fairly expensive process. Uh, requires lots and lots of energy, but um, at this point in the game, it's relatively straightforward for us to produce it. It's not it's not too difficult. And so these are these are the end game motors that are much much more powerful. 
powerful and they're great for taking a spaceship long distances, especially especially if you want to go somewhere where you can't easily get electricity because there isn't very much light available for your solar panels. With all of these, you also get booster tanks. So you get rocket booster tanks, which again use rocket fuel and they use enormous quantities of it but can lift a spaceship off a planet. Then you get the ion booster tanks, which use ion fuel, not surprisingly, and uh, they can't lift a spaceship off a planet, but they are capable of, t of, of departing from um, space stations. So leave leaving from a space station into space, they, they can do that uh, without too much difficulty. Then you have the antimatter booster tanks, and these are capable of taking off from the ground. They burn antimatter as you'd expect, and basically they just have far more power available in them than the uh, than the than the rocket fuel ones. Uh, and the fuel is, to be honest, easier to make, at least when you get to this sort of stage of the game. So these are again end game type things, and you can use you can also use them as fuel tanks for the uh, for the for the antimatter engines as well, in much the same way you would with the uh, with the ion or the or possibly even the rocket ones. And so Mark wanted those in order to power his new spaceship, and he's got a load of the antimatter booster tanks on it, so when you do land on a planet to kill all the aliens, you can take off again as well. We've researched the Deep Space Science Pack 2, that was a, that was in order to allow me to start actually, you know, making the things, so uh, it's an important step, and now we've done that, we can start carrying on doing things like um, archospheres and factory spaceships and matter processing and uh, those deep space belts I was talking about not very long ago. We then did uh, matter processing to allow us to make matter in more useful ways, and that was, as you can see, is a matter science research. Uh, so that allows us to turn the stone and sand into matter and also to make matter assemblers. Great. After that one, we then went on to matter processing as opposed to basic matter processing. So basic and then on to normal. This allows you, and this allows you to turn the stone, turn matter back into stone and sand. Uh, not quite so useful. We have plenty of stone and not enough matter. So that was, only, that was not a particularly useful research, but it's a stopgap on our way to doing other things. Because then we did iron conversion and rare metal conversion. And both of these ones allow you to turn those the, the relevant ore into matter. And technically the other way around as well, but that's less useful as I've been saying. But it allows, so this is how we're now able to turn all of our overflow rare metal and any overflow iron we find in order to power the matter science systems, which seem to be kind of hungry for it. Finally, we did Factory Spaceship 1 and Factory Spaceship 2. Each one of these, these are like the previous. So previously we did a Spaceship Structural Integrity, which gives you a boost of 100 to your spaceship sizes. Um, and, and that's got, got us up to about, probably about 8, nine, maybe 1,000, something like that. So it, except many hundreds anyway. Uh, and that, and each, each one of those essentially allows you to build a slightly bigger spaceship, carry slightly more on your spaceship and so on. When you get onto the factory spaceship ones, each research does 500 instead of 100, so it gives you a much bigger boost, which is, is fair enough, because at this point, putting an extra 100 on, instead of doubling the size of your spaceship, would only be about a 10% increase. So now we can we can do one of these and get a 50% increase. It's a bit more useful, and it allows you to make a significantly bigger spaceship. And this is what has allowed uh, Mark to that now make his, um, his landing craft slightly bigger, just big enough to fit that second water tank onto it. And, and, and then number two gives us another, presumably another 500 on top of that. So that has been our researching. We are currently working on, well, I say we are currently working on the antimatter reactor, which is a way of turning antimatter into an, into electricity. It's probably going to be useful somewhere. Maybe we'll use it on a spaceship. Maybe we I, I don't know. We, we will see in the future. Um, but in the meantime, that's we, we've, we've sort of work, working way on that one. Technically, we've finished it now, but that's only because I've been recording videos for an hour and a bit. But, you know, you, this is how it goes. So that covers the research. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with a Warptorio support supporter stream, which is why the videos have been nudged a little bit earlier this week. And then on Monday, I should be back with another stream where we'll be playing some more Factorio K2SE, where I am I think I'm going to be carrying on looking at Naquium, to be honest, because I think that is the bottleneck at the moment for all of the Deep Space Sciences. Uh, and there's plenty of other stuff for other people to be getting on with as well. At some point, we're going to tell uh, Mike that he has to go off and look into Arcospheres, which is going to be um, interesting, I'm, I'm sure. I don't believe he's watched my tutorial video on Arcospheres yet, so he's going. he should be going in completely completely blind. Um, but, you know, he's reasonably smart. I'm sure he'll be able to uh, come up with something that'll, uh, that'll work quite nicely. <laughs> or at least kind of work kind of nicely. Uh, then on Wednesday, I shall be back with some more Satisfactory. Um, we will see how things are going. I um, don't know what happened in last week's stream yet because I'm recording this before I do the stream. Uh, but the week before, I developed trains and put down the first railway lines. So that was quite exciting. I, I imagine there'll be more of that sort of thing. So please come along then and check out the other, the other stream on the channel. And, of course, at the end of the week, we'll be back with more videos and uh, the, and these update videos as, as usual. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.